Hello viewers, uh, this is Hardik Patel bringing a talk to you. The poor will pay universal free health care. And what we're going to talk about today is why government run health care is a bad deal, especially for the poor whom it will harm the most. Although this video is made in the context of health care, you will find that it applies more generally to all government spending. So let's get started. How do we want to fund free health care? Uh, well, we just want to tax the rich. So let's take a look at what the rich are doing with their money. And what we have here is a graph that represents how people in different income groups spend the last $100 of their income. So to the left, you have people making around 30,000 US dollars annually, and they spend about 90% of that income on personal expenditure that same year. And to the right, you have people making around $240,000 annually. Um, and it's, it's actually not just people, it's couples and families making around $240,000 annually. And you can see about 70% of their income is not even spent. Only around 30% is spent on their personal consumption and the rest of, rest of it is put away in um, bank accounts and retirement accounts and stocks. Um, so, this is this is consistent with uh, with human nature. I think people are apprehensive of uh, the uncertainty of the future and tend to save their income rather than spending it. Now we don't even consider two hundred and forty thousand dollars of income in a family uh, as making them rich. Uh, you know these are not the people that we want to target for extra taxation when we want to provide free healthcare to everybody. Uh, now, let's go on and see if we had data on people making a million dollars a year, uh, this is what it would look like. And uh, so let's focus on this super rich population that's making around a million dollars a year. And uh, the, again, the orange portion here uh, represents the marginal income that the rich spend on personal consumption. Uh, this could be restaurant dining, boating, uh, fueling their private jets. But here, the taller blue portion represents their ownership and reinvestment in the means of production of a society. Uh, this could be setting up factories, uh, opening a storage facility, uh, setting up a new shop. And, and these investments uh, produce more goods and services that the rest of us are, are happy to enjoy. So why are we uh, viewing this graph? Uh, the importance here is that when you tax the income of the super rich, it only affects their personal consumption or personal spending marginally. You know, do they stop dining in the restaurant that they were dining at before? Do they stop bait boating? Maybe, but the more significant uh, effect of it is that uh, that money that's being uh, given to the tax man is coming from investments that they would have made to produce even more goods and services in the economy. So let me ask you a fun question. We'll take the example of Bill Gates here. And the question is, uh, how much should we tax Bill Gates more next year, a million dollars or two million dollars, so that he stops flying around in his private jet and uh, starts flying with us in the economy class? And the answer is, a lot. You know, we could tax Bill Gates a million dollars next year and it would not affect the place that he lives at. He would still live in the same mansions, drive the same car and uh, fly the same jet that he does. So what's happening while we're taxing Bill Gates more and more, um, even though his personal consumption is not getting affected, is that he is merely foregoing the investments he would have made in the next generation of computer or software. So instead of you know setting up the factory to make the next Surface Pro tablets, he just gives it to the tax man. So what does this uh, lead us to? It leads us to the first rule of the stock, which is that the most significant impact of taxing the rich is the transfer of control of productive assets of a society, the factories the engineers, the doctors, um, the construction cranes, all these things come under the control of government. 
the personal lifestyles of the rich are not really significantly affected uh, by ta taxing them. It comes from their investments. So let us take a graphical look at how, I, how we may understand our economy to be. Here we have a, a very rich person. He has a lot of money in his bank account and maybe he owns five factories. And here we have the government represented by Uncle Sam. Uh, Uncle Sam taxes the rich man and sets up a hospital, a government-run hospital. Now, based on our rule number one, if the government was able to set up this hospital, we know that the land, the the janitor, uh, the engineer who did the did the air conditioning in this hospital, the physicians, all these people have come from one of these factories. So we now have one less factory because the resources that would have gone into making that factory have gone into making a hospital. A hospital. All right. So let us focus on how the the government is uh, running this hospital you know these are just some numbers which show you know the government easily spends like ten thousand dollars per year on each beneficiary when it runs the veterans affairs hospital or, or medicare so basically these are wasteful operations government operations are wasteful so instead of one factory shutting down to have the government open one hospital, you need to shut down more factories. So there it goes. Now you could have me uh, stop and say, no, we're going to stamp out the waste, fraud and abuse of uh, uh, government operations. And uh, but no, that's not going to happen. You know, as, as Milton Friedman put it, nobody spends somebody else's money as carefully as they spend their own. So, you know, the bureaucrats, uh, the, the politicians are people like you and me. They're running that hospital. It's not their own money and they're, they're wasting it. And so we will have to go ahead, ahead and shut down another factory right there. Now, maybe these factories were producing cars. Maybe they were producing warm coats, uh, maybe refrigerators. Uh, but now there's less of those uh, being produced. Even though there's a little bit more healthcare being produced, you don't have as many cars or fridge or, or coats being produced. So the total production in the economy of goods and services has gone down. And that's our rule number two. Government spending always reduces the total production of goods and services in the society. Yes, when you spend, when the government is spending money on healthcare, you have a little bit of more healthcare services, but in total, the goods and services have gone down um, as far as their production was concerned in any given year. All right, so let's go back to our rich uh, person and also bring in a poor person here and uh, see how they're doing. So this is the rich person we have and he's got money, loads of money, and the poor person's got a bag of money as well. Now, when the government taxes the rich person, it does not really do this. It does not give the money to the poor person, no. It takes the money away and it operates a healthcare operation system, maybe it operates a pharmacy and gives the poor person a little bit of medications to take for free. But the, the point here is, in spite of all the welfare schemes and taxations, uh, the rich remain rich. They still have more expendable income at the end of the day than the poor. Uh, they have a little bit less income and this person has a little bit more money, but this hierarchy of who's the richer person and who's the poorer person stays intact. And that's our rule number three. You know, with, with uh, government welfare uh, schemes, the rich remain rich, the poor, poor. So let's go ahead and see why this is important. Let us go back to a rich and uh, poor gentleman and uh, suppose a car becomes available for sale in the economy. Who do you think is buying it? I, I think the rich person is buying it. The poor person probably doesn't have that bad a need of it, so the rich person takes it. And what about refrigerators? So we have two refrigerators, uh, but wait, hold on, hold on. We don't have two refrigerators. We only have one refrigerator left in, this, in the economy for sale. Why? Because the, the factory that produced the second refrigerator closed down. When the government bought its land, the government bought its uh, or, or hired its people to run the hospital. So we only have one refrigerator left.
for sale in the economy. So you have one refrigerator that could possibly be bought by the poor person because he would like to you know, refrigerate his food and keep it safe. But you have two people who want one refrigerator. What happens? The price of the refrigerator goes up. It's now worth two bags of money and the poor person is not sure anymore that he wants it. So the rich person outbids the poor person and buys the refrigerator. So the poor person is now without a refrigerator and that's how it's going, going around. So let us uh, you know, recap what we've uh, learned so far. And the, what we've learned here is basically that the government spending harms the poor in a three-step process. Step one is whenever you tax the rich, the government takes control of the productive assets of the society. And then it goes ahead and uh, operates these assets in a way so as to reduce the total production of goods and services in the society. So instead of five refrigerators being produced, you only have, say, one refrigerator being produced. The, the total goods and services that are produced in the economy goes down. Now, the rich are still rich and the poor are still poor. Even though the rich were taxed more, they, they still make more money or they still have more money left at the end of the day than the poor. So how do these three uh, factors combine is that the reduced goods and services uh, go up in price and are deprived or have been held from the poor. So what this leads to is that the poor are the first to experience the material deprivation of government spending. Doesn't matter whose money was taxed but who had to let go of the refrigerator? Who had to let go of the next cell phone? It's the poor. Now, we all know that, you know, the poor people don't have two cars lying around so that if, if uh, you know, somebody deprived of them, uh, deprived them of one car that they will do just fine. No, they only have one car. And, and so it really affects their lifestyle. Uh, when government spends money and reduces the total goods and services available in the economy. And we have historical precedents of, of how bad it can be. We have horrors that we've seen in Venezuela, North Korea, USSR, uh, former China. The way that the poor pay for wasteful government spending is when the poor die. It's a real bad outcome. It's not just money. So we have to be careful about, you know, advocating for universal free health care and uh, taxing the rich more so that it could be paid for. I think the outcomes would be the worst for the poor people if we did that. Thank you.